Good morning, I'm Nicky Campbell. Welcome to The Big Questions. Now we're at Patcham High School in Brighton today to debate in the light of the Prime Minister's remarks today. One question, one very big question. Should the British stop tolerating intolerance? Welcome everybody to The Big Questions this morning. Now, this week's Ofsted report on the alleged Trojan horse takeover by Muslim fundamentalists of certain primary and secondary schools in Birmingham caused widespread alarm that children in secular state schools have been given a faith-based education which does not adhere to modern values and freedoms. Today, David Cameron said, we're sending out a worrying message. If you're completely intolerant of others, we will still tolerate you. And this has allowed extremism of both the violent and non-violent kind to flourish. Well, every British citizen has freedom of faith. We all have freedom of speech as well. Today of all days, the 799th anniversary of the signing of the Magna Carta. We should remember it gave everyone the freedom to go about their business, subject to the, law, to the laws of the land. So being British requires us to tolerate the ideas and actions of others that we might personally find objectionable, unless they're breaking the law. Well, to debate this clash between our own beliefs and the duty to tolerate others' freedoms and to think and act very differently, we have assembled a spectrum of political thinkers and commentators, a diversity of faith leaders and a, a medley of believers and sceptics. You can join in too via Twitter or online. Just log on to bbc.co.uk slash the big questions. Follow the links to where you can continue the discussion online. There'll be lots of encouragement and contributions, hopefully, from our Brighton audience. Should the British stop tolerating intolerance? Good morning again, everyone. Ajmal Mashur, British Council of Britain. Right, there's a massive political row about this, about Michael Gove, about government agendas, about political interference, about Ofsted. If we can set that aside and talk about the general, focus on the general issue, if that's all right. Um, there look, it looks like there are issues. Um, this sort of thing's been going on a while. It was a private school, but back in 2007, the King Fahd School in London had books describing Christians as apes and pigs. And that was a private school, as I say. The Olive Tree Primary School in Luton, which teaches five to 11-year-olds, had books which praised individuals who loved death more than life in the pursuit of their religion. And now we hear about this radical preacher, some very, um, well, controversial views, uh, being invited to lecture in, the, in this state school. Do, um, do these things trouble you? Yes, it, they do, of course. We should be teaching our children universal values. We should be teaching what the true faith teaches, which is to do with respect, acceptance of others, even if you disagree with them, to be conscientious citizen, God conscious all the time. Being good to God means well, being good to your school, fellow human being. We should teach them that in the States. I believe we should be teaching morals across the board. Be not God just, conscious. Yes, because God conscious, in my view, makes you who you are. I believe, as a, as, as a believer, that uh, we are hardwired to believe in God. That's how I believe. Now, if somebody doesn't believe that, that's okay. I'm quite ha happy to respect their view. I think the problem what we are seeing now, I have two kids and I don't send them to state school at the moment. We've been homeschooling them because I believe fundamentally our education system is failing our kids. But by creating this uh, pack mentality, putting them all in one school, giving them one sort of curriculum to be taught, it, it creates what we call the ready meals style education program. That doesn't create or nurture the innate goodness of children. We have done that. My, my kids speak four languages fluently now. But how, we, how and why have these objectionable ideas crept into schooling in this country? I believe that's because what we have done is, as a government, our government has failed miserably in providing a clear framework for ethical teaching. If you look at the way our education system is divided, it's between private school, grammar school and state school. State school is at the bottom of the pile, private school is the top. Why should the state school be left to rot? Why shouldn't the state schools have the same funding? Why shouldn't we not invest in good schools, good teachers, and good environment for our kids to become better? Well, let's talk about education. Let's take it away from the education debate, if I may. Uh, Majid Nawaz, uh, on the subject of, of these views, um, surely schools should reflect the areas in which they are operating and the communities which they are serving. And if you have a community which is 95% Muslim, surely that should be the focus of the school. That sounds like a pretty Govian idea, doesn't it? Well, put aside what Govian ideas are, I'm, I'm a secularist. I believe in religious neutral politics. I believe that despite uh, a school being 98% Christian, 98% Muslim, which uh, Parkview was, if it's a state school in a secular country such as Britain, then it mustn't be endorsing any form of religion. 
as its official way of doing. <laughs> so, though I agree with Ajmal's critique of the education system, where I would respectfully disagree, is that schools don't have any business teaching God consciousness. That's for the parents to do, and he's doing it very well with his own children. I know his family. Um, but it's not a school's job to do that. And so what has been going on, do you what's believe? What's been going on is uh, people have been mixing, uh, uh, and not just wider society, Muslims themselves have been mixing two issues, social conservatism, and it's no, one, it's no one's business how religiously conservative anyone else is, and that's not extremism. But when you try and impose religious conservatism on any public, public secular institution, mm -hmm. The imposition of that is what's extremism, and that's what's being taken, uh, that's what's being objected to here. Uh, no one cares, frankly, I don't care, no one else cares, if someone covers their hair, if someone grows a beard, uh, for religious reasons, mm. no one cares, and if they do care, they're wrong. But it's, it's the imposition in, 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 it's the, the, in the secular context. A well, secular what about this, this row about this, um, this extremist who said some um, very, well, disobliging is not the right word, some disgusting things about, you know, stoning people and death for upper states. Um, he wasn't saying that in the school, though, was he? And you're a, you're a liberal, mm. and you should... He, he wasn't talking about those things in the school. He was doing a general lecture on yeah. religion. So, so if, As a liberal, you should support his right to do that, shouldn't you? Right, so I, Are you I a liberal? Support, yes, and I support the legal right for him to speak, even if I disagree with those views just as if he was saying racist or homophobic or any form of bigotry. If he's speaking in this way, he has a legal right to do so. That doesn't mean that I tolerate it in civil society. It means I challenge it. Just as I would challenge racism, just as I would challenge homophobia or anti-Semitism, I will challenge a Muslim who's calling for women to be stoned to death. I don't say put that person in prison. What I do say is that you... <laughs> what I do say is that... We must not confuse liberalism with tolerance. Any political agnostic can be tolerant of bigotry. A liberal will seek to liberalise. A liberal will say, you are wrong for being racist M or being Miriam, homophobic. Miriam Frostwell, so I see that you're pretty desperate to say something now, but just on the, on the subject, if I may, if you'll allow me, of, of this particular gentleman, Shady al Suleiman, who came into this school and he has these particular views, do you support the, the right of the school to have him there and his right to go in and talk? Uh, I think schools should be vetting the people who speak to children much more closely than clearly they have been. But right. I do take issue with the idea that this reflects some sort of radicalisation because some overzealous governors are wanting to impose social conservative mores within the school. I think the problem really is to do with the fact that this government and the government before it, in fact, has allowed schools to develop a much more independent ethos. And in fact, that allows academies and free schools to give governors a much greater say in how schools are run, in the ethos, in even uh, how the curriculum is defined to some extent. Mm -hmm. So in doing so, it is effectively saying to communities, you can define your local ethos according to your own views. But then when it doesn't like the way in which communities form their own ethos, form their own That's curriculum... That's what I meant by the sort of Govian it principles. It is absolutely yeah. Govian principles. And, and to be fair, <laughs> the other issue is that this government really is playing a dub double speak here. It can't on one hand talk about the issue of cultural isolation and support support faith schools. Faith schools develop all sorts of forms of cultural isolation. That isn't to say they should be promoted in any secular schools, but to suggest that's a form of extremism suggests this government is actually supporting forms of extremism in faith schools. Which it, <laughs> which it does. Bizarrely... Um, I, I don't want to have a faith school, not I a faith school debate. I, I understand that. Yeah. And you don't want the whole education debate. Um, Gove, for all his ills, has continued something that's been going on for decades in Britain, and that is there's an underlying mm -hmm. law that says every school should have an act of worship. Every school child should have an act of worship. And I think that is nonsense. I completely agree with Majid that a secular approach to education is what... Well, is well, what like in France. It, it is what's needed. The British but, 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 it, but, what but there are schools... If, if, you sorry, sorry, if you go to local... By whom is it needed? You, you mean that's what you want? No, right? if there you there go are, to local... There are, there are, as it happens, quite a lot of conservative Christians in this country who object to the way... There are absolutely in, in which, people... Well, let Peter finish, I'll come right back to you. Who object to the way... Wait, wait, let Peter make his point, and then I will come back to you. Thank you. In good order. We object to the way in which Christianity has been stripped out of the state school system despite the fact that it is supposed to be in the system following the 1944 Education Act. It's a legal requirement and, and secularists in the education system quietly and as far as I'm concerned unlawfully have removed Christianity from our schools and we are as a result a spiritual desert as a country in, in which uh, any kind of conservative 
religious opinion is constantly sneered at by people such as this gentleman as being extremist or, or, or otherwise unacceptable. Extremist is a non-word. It means nothing. It means opinion currently unfashionable. <laughs> if you wish, to, if you wish to discuss whether something is right or wrong, discuss that. Marion struggles to say Peter Hitchens does have a point. Yeah, <laughs> well, we, we might Let me come back to Kevin. Kevin, Kevin oh, respond to Peter. Oh. And I want to speak to Douglas Murray. Kevin. It doesn't surprise me that Christians say they're being marginalised or they're being um, not given the status that they want to have because it's quite right they shouldn't have that status. In Britain, forgetting about the Muslim issue, in Britain there are schools tomorrow who will open and teach their children about creationism. They will teach their children that evolution is a lie and a conspiracy. That is nonsense. And me as a taxpayer, I'm funding that. That's, that's obnoxious. Well, let's get back to the state schools. Let's get back to this particular issue and the, 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 the alleged extremism that has been going on. Uh, not, not, the, not the Trojan horse context. We don't want to conflate two issues here. But Douglas Murray, you know, 95% of children in a particular area are of the Muslim faith. Uh, you were complaining in your article in The Spectator that in one primary school um, music was banned. That's kind of another issue. But raffles and tombolas were banned. I mean, what do you want to do? Do you want to encourage Muslim children to gamble? What's your problem with that? Should it, ref it should reflect the nature of the school. Yeah, so first they came for the tombolas. Um, for what? Well, look, um, <coughs> The, the problem the gambling going, going on here, wrong the, in those problem, the problem going on here is that we're in the middle of, of a debate. I mean, the nation is going through something very substantial change, and I think that what we've been discussing in recent days and what we've been discussing this morning kind of reflects this. Um, I mean, until very recently, you know, if you said to people, and it comes back to the British values thing as well, if you said to people until very recently, what is Britain, what are British values, you'd have got a fairly clear. Um, reply along the lines of, you know, a Protestant Christian country, we have institutions of church and state and monarchy and so on, which represent the country. As one of the results of mass immigration of recent decades, there has been a substantial change in the country. All sorts of good things have come from that and some negatives have. But one of the things that has come from it is this, uh, this confusion about what it is we are. We want to be open and tolerant, we want people to be able to practice their faiths, we want pe people to be able to express themselves and live the lives they want to live. What we're finding it very hard to do at the moment, and I mean the French secular example has already come up, is to work out where our lines are drawn as a nation, because they're not clear at the moment. It's we're in the middle. Draw those lines, isn't it? It, 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 it may prove impossible. It may be that we do something like the French state did and try to draw very clear lines. That's what you've heard in recent days, there's a bit of it already this morning, that you know, there's a problem with some schools that are actually you know, state secular schools that happen to have had... How bad are um, these problems? Uh, the problems exposed in, uh, in uh, Sir Michael Wolfshaw's report are, are pretty serious, and there's, there's more to come. Um, really? What's, about what's so teaching. serious in the report? I, I, think, I think, for instance, I mean, Wilshire himself says that these children are at risk of cultural isolation. Uh, there have been findings of children, for instance, being taught in assembly to chant anti-Christian chants and so on. This is, this is very unpleasant sectarian and stuff. did you know that but none I would, of the people spoken to? Did you know that none of the people in that school were spoken to during that so-called investigation? And, but, okay. and the, 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 the teachers were not speak on, spoken to either. Isolation. You come to Stanford, where I live, oh, well, not far away from our house, we have a particular community, the Jewish community, who live in a very isolated way. Nobody says anything about them. I have no problem with that. Hold on. I have no problem with that. If that's what they want to do, that's their choice. But we don't create a big fuss over the Jewish communities, especially that particular community no. living in that way. Wait, wait, you why, need to cause, why, why cause a fuss over a report that was made out of a hoax letter hang as on, well as... You, are, you acknowledge there are issues. I, I did what, say yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Rabbi, say, Rabbi, Rabbi Lord. First of all, we're, you're talking about uh, faith did. schools. We're talking about state schools. Exactly. That's the first thing. Yeah. Second thing... There are many, the no, many, hang on, the many of schools me. are funded no, by the state. You're not going to interrupt me. Stop. The second thing is what should be taught in schools. Actually, I think you should be teaching about religions. So that doesn't mean you have to believe. But if we don't know what other people believe, <laughs> we won't know. Yeah. The literacy to challenge the idea of what you mentioned, it, the, you used your language, of the true faith. But it's not just so I would say there are faiths out there, and Britain is about acknowledging truths of faith. And the third isn't, thing isn't is about what you tolerate. The third thing is about what we tolerate. I don't think that everything goes, and I think that if there is incitement to hatred, to racial hatred, or gender hatred, or sex about sexuality, actually you do restrict that. Okay, yeah. but Douglas Murray. Don't worry. Don't worry, we've got a lot of time. <laughs> Douglas Murray, you can't force people to believe things. 
You no. can't shoehorn people into a particular Douglas Murray shaped I have no intention David Cameron-shaped Britishness. No. Can you? No, I mean, uh, this is yeah, part of the problem. By the way, just, just very quickly I mean, on, this, on this matter of this, I mean, I do think that one of the things... But that address this, that this, issue about... Okay, can I just mention first, one of the interesting things that's come up in recent days and weeks, I think, over this whole Trojan horse business, is I think that some Muslims in this country, in particular, a lot of Muslim, a lot of Muslim spokespeople, a lot of Muslim groups have been furious about these revelations and are now denying them. They're still denying them. And this is something like happened in the Catholic Church over the paedophilia yeah. scandal. People just don't want to admit it. They don't want dirty laundry to be aired in public. They genuinely, they genuinely think that. And that's why there's, there's still this denial, even now. The there's an official report by Sir Michael Wilshaw. It found some very disturbing things. Some people still this, think that they don't exist. Is this the same Sir Michael Wilshaw and, who just did a U-turn and what Gov did or and, didn't and, tell and, him? But you, you know, Mary, Mary, the thing, either you think this has all been, do you think this has all been made up? Do you think it's all been made up? What I actually know is that there are serious governance issues, there have been internal administrative issues, whether there are issues of extremism, which is what you're peddling, and what in fact the publication you work for is peddling by publishing one of the worst covers in this country that I have ever seen, oh, suggesting that just... young children are vehicles for um, extremism and Nikki. terrorism. You should be ashamed Nikki. to be yeah, in this city. Can I, can, I just, okay, <laughs> can I just give, this is a very good example of the problem. Miriam. You are I'm a, sure you I are am. a very prominent, you're a very <laughs> prominent uh, spokesperson, you're a voice, you're a very prominent convert to Islam, you have a voice. I'm not, I don't call if, myself if, a convert, okay, so don't well, call right, me uh, whatever one. it is you, you, you yeah. want to call yourself, you have a voice. Here are some problems that are coming up which have been exposed in schools that seem to be teaching very seriously unpleasant things and they're being taught by some extremist Muslims. Why, Extremist. in this debate, you first of all deny that that is going on, and secondly, I've think the problem is a spectator cover cartoon. I've I never denied do that there not are understand. On these three, the problem is not the spectator issues. cover. I think the Let's issue is go. you're Miriam trying first. to I want to speak to Daniel Hannan. Yeah. Miriam, respond to that. You're, well, you're, you're trying to suggest what you're trying to do is support the, the go, Gove's agenda here, which is there are absolutely issues within these schools, and I think everyone, including the uh, Hands Off Birmingham school campaign and others, have acknowledged that there are certain people who should even stand down as a consequence of some of the revelations in this report and reports that will come. The issue, however, is trying to rebrand this as an, as an issue of extremism in order to expand this idea of extremism being non-violent ideas. or indeed Nick Griffin had been asked to come along and speak in a school. Neither of the you equivalents of those two individuals were invited <laughs> to speak in these schools. Well, I'm sorry, Shady Al Suleiman no. is a man who's... He's, he's, he's called... What? His views are worse than What are his views? Well, he's anyone who supports Al-Qaeda in public, anyone who supports the ideology of Al-Qaeda... Who says he supports Al-Qaeda? Anyone who supports the... Uh, I'm not philosophy. defending him, but who well, says... He's being stoned to death. He shouldn't be invited to address him. Are you saying he's not as bad as Gert Wilders on Nick Griffin? Wait, one at a time. I'm absolutely saying he shouldn't be invited to address schools. You're saying he's not as bad as Gert Wilders on Nick Griffin? I'm saying you can't can't compare the people who are speaking in these schools. I don't know about this Griffin. particular yes, speaker. Worse. Mary, let me finish my point, please. You, you can Any, finish your point, yeah, but I'm saying to you, point. you have to please allow people to speak point. in this country. Yeah, allow me to speak, egregious Allow me to speak. Anyone who believes in stoning people to death, Nick Griffin has reprehensible views, but he doesn't believe that an adulterer should be stoned to death. Anyone who does should not be invited to a school. And nor should the Does that include Jewish rabbis? And nor should Does that wait, 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 let's have a question. And the next on the list right. is Daniel Hannan. And, and yes. Hannan, I will no, no, come no, to you. Margin, yes. I, 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 I will I come to you. No, not yet. Please. Right, so please, there's a lot of people, a lot of very interesting people to talk to. If we can all agree that Nick Griffin should not be invited to speak to children. Of course he shouldn't. And neither should this speaker. But nobody said he should. Can I finish my point? And if we can agree there, then we should also, by implication, agree that anyone who believes in ideas far more reprehensible should not be invited to speak at schools. That's a, it, it's a, it's a moot point. It's just not something we should even yes, be it's debating. Yes, it's a platitude. The fact, that we're, defensive about that is, is the fact that we're defensive about that is, is illustrative of the problem. I'll come to you with a question. Nobody, nobody's defensive about it. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, no, 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 uh, Daniel uh, Hannan is next. I want yeah, to bring it back. Peter Hitchens, thank you. I um, want to bring it back. And I think you've both, with huge respect, yes. dealt with that particular issue. And, and we're going to park it for now. <laughs> Daniel Hannan. Yeah. Um, MEP, freedom, we saw of course in recent European elections a certain swing in a certain way and a, and a, and a huge discomfort across Europe about certain things that are happening. But this, th this is, the, this is the, the crux here, isn't it? In our debate about tolerating intolerance, how far, where do we draw that line? What is the definition of freedom? What is Britishness? Well, you tolerate mm. objectionable behaviour up to the point of incitement. Mm -hmm. You tolerate eccentricity up to the point of madness. You tolerate <laughs> offensiveness uh, up to the point of harassment. Uh, toleration means you tolerate. Uh, uh, it means you tolerate things that you find 
utterly appalling. What are British values? Well, you said at the beginning, Nikki, it's, today is the 799th anniversary of the signing of Magna Carta. You could do a lot worse than the spare terse inscription that appears on the Magna Carta memorial in Runnymede. Freedom under law. If you wanted to distill British values into one phrase, and in that phrase is incorporated all the things that through the years made this country a better place to live than the authoritarian alternative. The universe. It implies, it implies uh, regular elections, uncensored newspapers, equality between the sexes, jury trials, habeas corpus, free speech, free assembly, free conscious. Uh, it, it so where there is not equality between the sexes <coughs> and we have this uh, segregation row, uh, whether it's going on or not, in public places and people's belief that there should be modesty and there should be some form of separation. We hear that from uh, the authoritarian right-wing group, his book Tahir. Tahrir. Uh, that, that, what should we do in that situation? How do we clamp down on I agree with what Majid said. You, you tolerate those views. Tolerating those views is not the same as teaching them in school. Absolutely. Every child born in this country, wherever his or her parents came from, is the heir to that same birthright that began with the Great Charter 800 years ago. Mm. And, part of, and we, we cannot allow our own sons and daughters in this country, wherever their parents came from, to be denied their portion of our patrimony as a free society. That is something that should go without saying, of course, people can have, whatever, once, once they've left school, they can have whatever eccentric opinions they want. But, but teaching people that they are not just a random collection of individuals, born to a different random collection of individuals, but that they are British citizens, that we're bound together, regardless of creed, regardless of, of race, that we have a, a, an identity as British subjects, and we're connected one to another, that is something that should go for all our children. Liberalism with a small L. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, is that what Peter Hitchens in a minute? Don't worry, I've got you all in mind. Peter Hitchens, is that something that we should fight for, the democratically achieved um, aspiration to and reality of liberalism? It's fascinating the way all these British values merchants are so coy about the real basis of the liberty which we enjoy, which is the particular form of Protestant Christianity which this country adopted, which created in people the, 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 the strength of conscience, the self-restraint, the belief very strongly that law should be above power because law derives ultimately from God. That is what actually makes this country what it is, but they won't talk about that because many of them are not Christians, many of them are active secularists, and many of them are nominal Christians, and they don't really believe these things. That's what made us what we are and made us the kind of country that we are. Yeah. And to try and generalize this into some kind of human rights blamage is to make a fundamental mistake about how it came about and what we would need to defend if we wished to preserve it. The interesting thing is I don't think a lot of the people, the loudest noises who go on about this, actually do particularly wish to preserve it because many of them are allied with the principle a political lobby which has undermined it most of all, which is the lobby which has been in favour of open borders, mass immigration and multiculturalism, which has made it so difficult to sustain this country as it was. <laughs> Ajmal and Marine have just fallen out with you. <laughs> they were with you. Peter, what, what you just said Daniel about, Hanna. What you just said wait, 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 Daniel Hanna. Being responsible. <laughs> that, 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 that is just false history. It is true that a, a measure of our individualist culture can be said to have a Protestant basis, and that, that's Why did you think history. I was aiming that at you? No, I don't think it was aimed at me. But, it was, actually. But when, when, look at the phrase, look at the phrase that appears in the Great Charter, the law of the land. Not the king's law, not God's law, but a law that was imminent in the people and the territory. That was the genius of this country. That was our unique achievement, and that's been our greatest export, our supreme so contribution to the happiness of mankind. Single, the idea that the law is above Daniel, the government, the biggest guy in the country person. doesn't get to tell other people not what as, to do. He is bound by something bigger than him. And that is not a divine book. It's not a, a prelate or a prince. It's the law inherent in all not, of us as a common not, not, not a single person. Not a single person present at Runny Mead 799 years ago today did not believe in the Christian God or know? believe that law you, derived from you know? God. That's nonsense. Uh, uh, I think there was there. Not only do you believe in equality between men and women. Adnan's been waiting. Don't worry. We've, we, no, we've got time. This is one debate in, a, in an entire hour. I mean, Adnan Rashid, um, I just wonder, um, should we not be really careful about what we teach our children and we should be teaching all children, because we rise about this, the great literature of, uh, of, of the, you know, Romeo and Juliet, the great Shakespearean plays. Uh, otherwise, um, they are kind of denuded and they, they're disconnected from the rest of our culture. 
and they need more cultural enrichment than just a sacred text. Do you not agree with that? I agree with that 100%. We must teach our children how to live in this world. This is a very complex multicultural world and we live in it as a family. Like this, this is a perfect demonstration of a family. We are all a family. We disagree with each other. We're a dysfunctional sometimes, family. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, uh, well, yeah, some, yeah, yeah, sometimes yeah. severely. Some, I, I, I find some <laughs> of the views here uh, very objectionable. But I, I'm, 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 Majid Nawaz comes out, with, you know, he, he's attacking Muslims for believing in things that the Jews believe in. There are Jewish rabbis who believe in exactly the same things that Sheikh who came to lecture in the school. Yeah, and and have you what, ever what seen, aspects have you ever seen, attack? I, mean, I, I want to ask Majid, okay. do you see anything wrong with the Jewish rabbis? What? Ma do, do you see anything wrong oh, with them? That's a you, uh, exactly. Well, no, so, so, so well, let's hear is, an answer. The point is... <laughs> that was a big okay. question. Let's hear... Wait, 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 no, no, no. Let's hear it. You've got another I question. Say... Oh, no, big, big answer. Okay. Majid, no, Majid. No. <laughs> he doesn't see anything wrong with them. No. What, so, uh, so the Jews can believe in the Torah. Adnan, what and there's aspect, a problem what with the Muslims aspect, believing in the Quran. What, what aspect... Hang on, wait, 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 wait. What aspect of Muslim belief did he decry? Anything, everything he picks on in the Muslim belief. Wait, wait, wait. Let me finish. Everything he picks on in the Muslim belief is believed by the Jews. The Jews believe in the Torah. And Torah has verses. I mean, they believe in the five books. I challenge Majid to come out in public to condemn, to criticize the Jews in, uh, for believing in things the Muslims believe in. He will never do that because that will destroy his political what career. The he will in? be accused of anti-Semitism. I don't want him to do that. I defend the rights of the Jews to believe in Majid. what they want to believe in. Majid, Likewise, we must, we as Muslims. Wait, 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 Laura, in a second. Laura, in a second. Laura, in a second. But just on this particular issue, I saw you on news. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. I saw a news night the other night. Yeah. You were there with uh, Jennifer Collier, Ibrahim Hewitt. And he, and we've seen this on other occasions, he, he refused, he runs a faith school, but he refused to. And a lot of people do, do not understand the complexities of the ultimate aspirational Islamic State and Sharia law would, would have been aghast at his refusal to condemn stoning. What's yeah. that all about? I think I just understood what's going on. So, the wow. old... <laughs> I think I've just got it. Did you understand the question? Yes, I think I've just understood... I lost what myself halfway through. I, I think I've just understood what our friend here is yeah. on about. Um, the Old Testament mentions stoning, and I condemned a chap on Newsnight for not condemning stoning women to death. Look, if you're an atheist, if you're, if you're Jewish, if you're Christian, if you're Muslim, if you're a horse, right? <laughs> and you call for stoning women to death, I will challenge you and condemn you. I don't care what your religion is, frankly. And I agree with him. I, I, well, uh, wait, 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 I'll tell you what. I, I wait, wait, agree with him. You do not call wait, wait, people wait, wait, to stone to woman he, to death. He, you asked him a question. Not a Muslim on why the planet calls for wait, stoning a woman. Wait, wait, Adnan, why don't you ask... Uh, sorry, Majid. Well, easily confused. Yeah. Majid, why don't you ask Adnan the question... Stoned. Uh, the key question here about stoning. Why don't you ask him? Well, I mean, we could ask about stoning. Well, I'll ask him about that. Yeah, so because I, I don't, I, I'm not sure what you're taking issue with because you see, it sounds My to me like... My take is the Islamic take. Ask right. the question. Okay, so if in an uh, Islamic state, mm -hmm. with the Sharia conditions right. all being perfect, right. in principle, mm -hmm. I condemn stoning a woman to death. Okay. Right? Do you, with Sharia conditions being present, Okay. Uh, in an Islamic state, condemn okay. stoning women right. who are adulteresses right. okay. to death. Yes or no? Can I? No, there is no yes or no answer. Can I ask him a question? <laughs> no, no. Can I ask him a question? Can I ask him a question? Why is Majid, there no yes? Likewise, likewise, Majid, Majid, can I talk Why is to there you? No, yes or no, 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 no. Nikki, can we get an I, answer? I, I, I answered his question. Okay. Can we now get an he, answer? He misrepresented. Do not let him get away with no answer. Wait, wait, wait. I answered his question. Nikki, wait, wait, wait. Fair and fair yeah. the two of them. Exactly. I want to know. I want to know. Wait, wait, wait. have to Are you going to answer yes or no? No, there's no yes or no answer right, to this okay. question. Rabbi Laura. To, okay, so Rabbi I Laura. found what you said extremely distasteful. And what, the tone, what, I haven't finished, the like tone what, in which you a, said please. about the Jews, yeah, Jewish rabbis, absolutely. the stoning, incredibly distasteful. I didn't criticise anyone. Yeah. And I just said I, I, it really I, 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 I defend, I defend the rights Laura of talk. the Jews. Please, I defend I you the rights great. of the Jew to That's believe great. in what they want to believe in. Let Laura talk. So we have to be consistent. Please let Laura talk. And I really would find it very uncomfortable if you started defending me because I would find that quite untrustworthy after what you've just said. What did I say? So, I'm, I'm finished. Sure. Anybody who uses text to defend violence, stoning, is wrong. Right. And if there is a school 
a faith school or a state school that is teaching it, I object to it because I believe in the rule of the land. And I believe that schools are there to teach, to teach that they do need supervision, faith schools and non-faith schools. So they shouldn't be, to... The government shouldn't get rid of their responsibilities no, by no, handing no, these things over. And any violence from whoever, from whatever type of faith, and the faiths are not unitary in how they are, sure. should be condemned. Okay, uh, Tracy. <laughs> Sorry I've waited so long before I, I, I've it's come just to fine. you. Are, you're in education. I believe you're an educational social worker. I have in the past been in education. In the past, yeah. so you, yeah. you understand this area. Surely it's this. It's, it's not so much what people believe. It's the fact of imposing those beliefs on children who Absolutely. have not yet had the chance to make an informed decision. Absolutely. And I think that's what makes it so difficult when you talk about things like asking people with extremist views into schools. If professional teachers are allowed to do their job properly, their job is around equipping young people to make informed choices about what's being said and about the speaker, about context, because actually if we don't teach about a multiplicity of faiths within schools and about a range of different value systems, and it's uncomfortable, that will involve them hearing things that I don't agree with, but if we don't teach and equip young people to make discerning judgments about those things that are being said, they're going to be badly, badly let down in how real do we, life. How do we equip them? What does that mean? I think it's about allowing teachers to do their jobs properly. It was interesting when you were talking about the situation in Birmingham. I'm, I recall um, in a previous role I had going in and visiting a, a Catholic-run pupil referral unit, which was doing some really good things with young people from Catholic schools who were struggling within the education system. And what the leader of that centre said to me is, part of why I can do what I do with these young people is because I can stand in front of them and say, as a Catholic... I believe those things. I believe those within a range of different things, but actually I believe that I'm utterly loved by God unconditionally. And as a Catholic, I can stand and say that in that context. Said, I think we've reached a point where in schools today, people are afraid to say that and fearful of saying that. But I, we, I, 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 I heard tell of one particular... So sorry to interrupt, but it's mm. important to what... And I think it's relevant to what you're saying. Mm. Well, I heard tell of one particular... A friend was telling me, one particular Catholic school, they were telling five-year-olds about burning in hell. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you need to be Catholic, you don't need to be Christian, you just need to be I mean, essential we're, we're, human beings. This is not just an issue of, of yeah. extremist yeah. Muslims. Absolutely yeah. not. Uh, no, and I think, that, I, mean, I think yeah. that would be another point I would make. Why on earth as Christians we <coughs> seem to think that this is something that's happening to other people, that it's only Muslim schools where these sorts of things can happen? Of course there's a question of degree, but actually we have to turn the light on ourselves and say, as Christians we have some pretty shady parts of our own past that we're not so willing to own up to around extremism and around views that people find unacceptable. I don't understand why we we seem to dissociate ourselves from that. It's all about them out there. Actually, yeah. we all swim in the water and we all get wet. We've all done these things. And actually, it behoves any of us to be making judgments about that being the, the sole responsibility of the Muslim community have to sort out. We've done those things ourselves and we need to be humble about that. Daniel Hanna. You know, the single most disturbing thing I've heard this morning, in fact, really the only disturbing thing I've heard <laughs> this morning, was how in a conversation about who is and isn't allowed into secular schools, it, we suddenly got onto the Jews. Mm -hmm. How on earth did that happen? That's something, you, that, that's something which, travelling around the world, I've got in other countries, and it's not something I ever expected to hear in a conversation in this country uh, on television. And I, I, I really do find that chilling. But I would, I would just say one, one thing which I, I do strongly um, agree with the point that we're not talking about a faith community. We're talking about bad behaviour by some individuals. I have been uh, elected for 15 years. I have about 150,000 Muslim constituents. A number of them have got themselves elected to things. I have Muslim councillors, uh, Muslim MPs, the, leader, the new leader of the Conservative group in the European Parliament. Saeed Kamal is a fairly devout uh, believing Fairly Muslim. devout. Yeah, he tries to pray Slightly five times pregnant. a day. He, he keeps the fast. He's done his hard. Right. You know, but being British, he's very diffident about it. He yeah. hates talking about his faith. But in a, in a quiet way, he has done his best to live as a good Muslim. It makes him a better politician and it makes him a more rounded human being. And the difference between him and Adnan is he's got himself elected to something. And I would say he is much more representative of the majority of British Muslims that I have in my constituency than people who make great television but who haven't taken the trouble to get a mandate in the ballot box for any of their opinions. Ajmal Masrur. I stood in the last parliamentary election, didn't win, became second. Uh, so I believe in the democratic process of all of our, uh, of, the, of the way to uh, represent and make, put our interest, for the interest of the community first. 
uh, the other day I was, I was, I was traveling, um, I heard a group of people be talking behind me, those Muslims, the Muslims, mm. these Muslims. So the new fashionable word or this <coughs> fashionable word, almost disgusting word is that you can swear, attack the Muslims, almost it's the free house. But it's, it's the culture that is the becoming the problem. And also I remember Said the Warsi not long ago was saying, mm. Barnes, this has become yeah. fashionable to talk around dinner table against the Muslims. I'm hearing this is becoming worse day by day. I went to Birmingham the other day just to investigate at the back of the school what's really happening. I spoke to some parents, I spoke to some, some teachers and some pupils. And they all said we're scared of being Muslim any longer. Mm -hmm. And that's a terrible state of, uh, of, 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 of play. We don't want to do that any longer. Right. What we want to do is, hold on, okay. we want to create a society where we all feel respected, even if we disagree. So Islam has a contribution to make, and it has. If it wasn't for the Muslims translating the books of the Greeks into Latin, we would not see what we see today in the industrial world. So I think those recognitions need to be made in our history books. We need to create an inclusive society mm -hmm. and not preach this hatred that's dominating our discourse exactly. currently. Who's exactly. preaching hatred? Uh, yeah, I agree. Wait a minute. But we had, we had 400,000 Muslim soldiers who came and fought in this country for our values in the First World War, more in the Second World War. Young men who all came as volunteers, crossing half the world to take up arms for a country on which in most cases they'd never set eyes because they believed that our values were better than the alternative. And they were right. They were fighting for a system that <coughs> elevates the individual above the state rather than exalting the state our, above our the individual. Values. No, 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 it's our values. values. Yeah. Our values, yes. You, yours and mine values. because uh, we both live uh, in uh, this country. Collective values, right? The new conservative value that we have just heard from Michael yeah. Gov, it actually excludes everybody else. No, it in his, well, listen, listen for a second. In his book, Celsius 7-7, he identifies Islam as the poisonous, pernicious religion that needs to be fought oh, at all costs. Islamism. No, he? hold on. Well, However you want to call it, we yeah. know his well, agenda. Hang on. No, no, hang on. Please, You've please. just made this you... elision between Islam and terrorism, no, no, which it, is what the... No, no. That's exactly what Michael Gove is doing. And currently, yeah. that's the debate we're having. The British value that we're talking about, we need to talk about British value with a bigger uh, 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 agenda, and that is, how can we create an inclusive society where Muslims, the Jewish communities, right. the Hindu Sikhs, people of faith and no faith, have a stake in this right. one and we've been pretty good over the years. We've done that better audience. than almost any other if country in the world. Fair point. Uh, well, okay. We should do better than that. Gentlemen, 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 we should do better. Gentlemen, let's hear from your, your, your constituents. Let's hear, because you stood as a Liberal Democrat, didn't you? Let's hear from, uh, you, you like democracy, you're all for it. Let's hear from, yeah. Oh, everybody, please, go ahead. Uh, well, I don't know, Adnan. Uh, <laughs> no, come yeah, on. Gentlemen at the back, gentlemen at the back, go on. Um, basically, Quick points, to please. be British is an idea of freedom that yeah. united our country, united the Commonwealth, united the English people, and it's enshrined in John Stuart Mill. Everyone has the right to practice their happy life, but when it takes away the freedom to other people to practice their happy life, that, that's why the British state has to be really strong in mediating boundaries. I, I defend everyone's right to practice their religion in any interpretation they choose, even if that's an extreme interpretation, but they don't have the right to stop a citizen criticising religions, mm. writing thoughtful books, <coughs> making films. We have to, the British state has to be really strong that will in defining the, the that's boundaries. A really that's, a really that's a really good definition. That's a really good definition. Yeah, you can thank, you, thank you very much indeed. As long as you don't And, and I want to come on to that in a second, because it's, it leads us nicely into another thing I want to talk about. Let's just hear from this lady first of all, though. Uh, good morning. Okay, okay. Um, I, I'd just like to say thank you to Peter uh, for making the comment of a spiritual desert. We are sitting here right now in Brighton, reputedly being the most godless city in England. Oh. Yeah, we have one of the highest most rates. godless city. Uh, yeah, in, in England, apart from Barnsley. We have one of the highest <laughs> rates. This is important, what I'm going to say. We have one of the highest rates of young people's suicide. Also. Is that because it's godless? It I don't it? know. I'm just telling you some facts because you mentioned the word allegedly. Yeah. And if we're debating allegedly, we ought to look where our feet are right now. Because when two people in a family are having a row, the children suffer. And when two neighbours are having a row, the street <coughs> suffers. And when the street is having a row, the whole community suffers. And what we are looking at is an elephant in the room. If we keep focusing and talking about Muslims in Birmingham, we are missing the point that children on our own doorsteps are dying are suffering from mental illness and it is poverty that's at the root cause of this okay. and I know the media are looking to sell more newspapers and how exciting is it to keep commenting on what one person has said that's going to be talking about something okay, that everybody you. disagrees Godless. with
Godless City Kevin Fry, that very quickly. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, and it, this is something we do cover a lot. I, I wouldn't have the faintest idea whether Brighton was a godless city or wasn't a godless city. What I would be interested in is how do the people in Brighton relate to each other. Mm -hmm. My experience of visiting Brighton fairly regularly, because I live on the south coast, is it's a great place to visit. I love the warmth of the reception I get here. I love the interaction I have with people. I haven't the foggiest whether they're Muslims, Jews, Hindus, Jains, uh, whatever, atheists, I just Pagans. wouldn't know, it, it's just irrelevant. Yeah. There's, there's something fundamental in here, and we've seen, this sort of, there's a parallel process here in the argument that's going on here, because the, the question today is, should we be tolerant of intolerance? And I doubt if anybody would hold their hand up and say, yes, generally we should, be, we should be tolerant of intolerance. We shouldn't, but there's certain levels that we shouldn't go beyond, there's the law of the land, but we set, we, we set levels as well that we, we say, cultural levels that we say, culturally, we won't go beyond that. We don't need a law. We don't need a good book. We don't need a priest or a priestess to tell okay. us. Well, Listen, so on, on the side, I'll allow me to do this. I'm prepared you in. to say that we, should, that, that, that we should tolerate intolerance. I believe that freedom of speech and thought are so valuable that we should defend them at all costs <laughs> against yes. all enemies. And that if, you, if you can't defend the freedom of speech and thought of people with whom you profoundly disagree, then it is no freedom. But this debate splits into that, two. That, 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 uh, there's, 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 a very, there's a very important point about all this use of the word extremism in this discussion of these schools. We're constantly told that they, they are practicing extremism, and the suggestion is then made that this extremism will lead on to the commission of terrorist acts by people who have been taught extremism. This seems to me to be very dangerous for freedom of thought yes, and speech. Absolutely. Many of the ideas which I hold, which frankly when my parents held them were commonplace in this country, but, but when I hold them are now deemed to be eccentric and outrageous by a lot of people, are increasingly classified as extremism by the mainstream. How long is it before the classification of somebody's ideas as extremism how long is it before, this, before yeah. let me no, finish I the point, to to if I may, I'm clearly about to finish it, so if you interrupt me now, you stop me doing so. How long is it before the classification of such ideas as extremism leads to restrictions on freedom of speech? I don't think it's very long. I think we should be very careful about the way in which we approach these things. I disagree immensely with a lot of what Muslims think and say. I, I, don't, I, think, I, I think that there are many, many disputes which I have with many, many criticisms I have of their faith, but I think they should be free to express them, not least so that we can know what they are. Okay, Andrea, yes. we, we, we speak at last. Uh, <laughs> you, believe, that, yeah. you believe there's an issue, don't you, across the world? Because quite a lot of people come to this country because it is a tolerant country, and yet I know you feel that when Christians go abroad, they're very often persecuted, aren't they? Or when well, Christians it, well, that, who live abroad. Well, indeed, that they are persecuted, and we've seen whether in secular regimes, hard secular regimes, very often... Uh, Christians um, are not free to practice their beliefs. In hard Islamic regimes, Christians aren't free to practice their beliefs or secularists aren't free to go about their way. So I think we do have to look at the root of why our, our country has been known as the, the land of the free and the brave, a, la a, a country where our education systems, our parliamentary systems have been emulated across the world. Why? It goes right back to the Magna Carta, that's true. But the, the, the inspiration behind the Magna Carta was Jesus Christ. The inspiration was Christianity. We, 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 and, and, and actually, that's that, and that, and that, and and that is what it. has given us our freedom and our flourishing. And the reality now is, right, as we way. experience social, cultural um, chaos and a, and a deep sense of lostness in terms of our identity, um, that we, we get this kind of collision of ideas, suppression and oppression. The, the reality of Christianity is that it is welcoming, it is hospitable, it doesn't coerce, oh, yeah. it hosts. And what we're finding with an increasingly secular regime, and certainly what I'm finding as director of the Christian Legal Centre, is that Christians are losing their jobs for offering prayer, Christians are losing their jobs for holding uh, opinions in schools, Christians are losing their jobs because they won't preside over same-sex marriages. There is a reality, and, and we're fu we're fu this, is, this is reality. I think another thing I want to just say mm. as well, um, a reality of working at the Christian Legal Centre, is this, that in the last month we've had women um, who have been born and raised in London and in London schools and at London universities who um, have wanted to leave Islam and they have been threatened with their life if they leave Islam. Now these women aren't coming from Saudi Arabia, they're not coming from northern Nigeria. Sadly, they're coming from London, they're coming from Birmingham, they're coming from Bradford. And that's when we, do, we can't tolerate 
um, such intolerance. We can't tolerate we don't. the threat of women. Yeah. Th but this so is something that we need to address. Imagine, Miriam. Thank you, Andrew. That's not a thing. Thank you, Andrew. 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 Thank you, Andrew.
And this is an experience I've had with my eldest daughter. She's eight now. Eight years of teaching children has made me more convinced that there are more needs for absolutes. Secondly, if the society didn't have absolutes, we'd all be doing all sorts of things without coming together on a plane that would govern us and create a cohesive society. But as a faith leader, is it your duty, sorry to go back to this, it's okay. to bring um, beliefs up to date or... Contemporary interpretation of your text, as far as I'm concerned, as a Muslim, is a must. Yes. I can't not, I, I can, I'm, I'm, it's wrong of me not to. The concept of ishtihad, which is a very uh, fundamental principle of Islam, and that is to constantly renew the verdict that has been given to make it more relevant to the, the world in which you live, 21st century. But not now. to the extent that you would say equal marriage is okay. You would stick to ancient beliefs on that. There are certain principles of faith. For example, if somebody says, can you please abolish prayers? Can you please end fasting in the month of Ramadan because it falls in the longer days in June? Can we take it to December when it's shorter? We can't do those changes because these are absolutes in the Quran. And that's what makes Islam distinctly Islamic. If you take them away, you might as well not have Islam. So I'm saying contemporary interpretation would imply, how do I practice my faith? For example, in Norway, where the sun doesn't set. So what about equal marriage? Would that be something you say that's that, an absolute? As, as far as I'm concerned, Islam doesn't accept that. And those who do, we must allow both the sides to remain to their views. I can't change anyone's view. I believe in one, somebody else believes in something Much different. Much in the yeah, And it's that, not, in it's, hold on, I, that in itself it's, creates it's, so the uh, level playing field in which we tolerate. Much in the I agree. And, and, and that's that good reason why the state is secular. Because he's got the right to say that and the state will conduct equal marriage. It will conduct marriage between a man and a man and a woman and a woman and it will not listen to that unless he wants to do it in his home. He can follow that view. But the state is not obliged to take fact, any religious side on this and that's called equality before the law. I'm yeah. Douglas, we haven't heard from you for a while. Yeah. Give me a Douglas first. Let's say a couple of things. First of all, I, mean, I always think it's useful the former Bishop of Edinburgh, Richard Holloway, had a very good line on this. He said that the opposite of, um, of faith is not doubt but certainty. Okay. Um, and I think it's worth bearing in mind. Look, I just wanted to mention also, there's a, it came, comes back to something I said earlier, but the, 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 the period we are in of churn and rethinking about what is ex ex exactly is, it's what the Prime Minister has been writing about this morning. Everyone's trying to nail these, these values down. Really and, to and, and, and one of the things about this is, and I think it, but it's just the reaction to Andrea's comments, a good example of that. No, nobody, it seems, is very keen on admitting where, I mean, I speak as a secularist, but Nobody's very keen on admitting the Christian origin of some of these things, and I think we have to be frank about that. We can't write our heritage out or pretend it was something else. And, and just very quickly, one of the things that is, is being done on this, which has come up several times this morning, is this attempt to sort of encompass everybody in the new values. Um, I mean, sometimes you know, it's, 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 all, it's all freedom, good, openness, great tolerance, yes. It, it, it's all fine. There is a risk, however, in this, and it comes back to the, the thing about always highlighting gay marriage and other things, again, something I'm supportive of. But there is a risk in this that we build up this new value system on extremely wide ground, because it's ground we want to be as wide as possible to encompass everyone, but it might also be ground that's very shallow. And I would suggest that some of the things we're talking about, if, if you identify your country solely on some of the lines we're discussing at the moment, it could yet prove to be, and this comes back to the point the lady in the back made, it could prove to be too shallow for some people, and I think that's something we have to think about. Well, Peter, you say in your column today, this whole, this whole thing about... Oh, let me, okay, the gentleman now wants to say something, then I'll come to you, Peter. You're, you're very insistent. So, yes. let me just bring the microphone. Oh, very quick, we'll run out of time. I'm a 91-year-old gay man. Following what these gentlemen have said, I'm living in a relatively gay... A uh, relatively friendly gay city of Brighton. I'm in an 18 year long re loving relationship with my partner. I campaign for to combat homophobia. I used to say to people, please understand. I've been married, had three children, I've got three grandchildren, but I've always been gay. People have said to me, you can't possibly be gay. <laughs> I didn't choose to be, I am gay. Now, I stopped asking people to understand because I don't understand myself. <laughs> so I now say to people, please accept homosexuality. <laughs> Fine. A fine oration, sir, and it's lovely to have you in the studio. <laughs> about to say Peter, you, Peter yeah. you say in your column today, uh, you described this, uh, I mean, I said nailing jelly to a wall, this, uh, finding a definition of Britishness. You described it as squelchy. Uh, you know, it's, it's impossible to define. What is Britishness to you? 
I, it, it, is, it is impossible to define. I don't, I don't inter uh, you can only define it by the way in which it's been destroyed. So what does Mr. Cameron mean? What's he talking about? He doesn't know what he means. He's, he's, he's simply talking for, for political advantage. The difficulty that these people have is that the, the nation state, which I very much support, is the largest unit in which it's possible to be effectively unselfish. We had that. Now that we don't necessarily share either a religion or a language or a belief in certain customs and laws, we don't have it. It's, it's a regrettable change that's overtaken this country, but one which is obviously irreversible. How we work out how to live with our new neighbours in peace and harmony is going to be very difficult. I don't think it's going to be British. I think we've lost that. It's going to be something else. Uh, we can mourn its loss, but to pretend that we can recreate it by speeches... I think, I think British values anyway. are actually remarkably easy to define. They reside in the elevation of the individual above the state and the elevation of the law above the government. In other words, in constitutional freedom. Now, you might say, oh, but those are universal values, though, or at least they're Western values. No. How did they become universal values, right? Imagine that the Second World War had ended differently. Imagine that the Cold War had ended differently. There'd have been nothing universal about them then. These were values overwhelmingly developed in the language that you and I are now talking. And they were exported, yeah, through, uh, if we're honest about it, through a series of military victories by the English-speaking peoples. And thank God they were. Imagine if <laughs> those conflicts of the last hundred years that. had ended differently okay. and we were living in a system that elevated the state over the, the individual. Today, there was nothing yeah. universal. <laughs> 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 there are two ways to say British values. Bruce Lyons, you can say British, you're out, or British with warmth. So let's say British values is a warm thing based on universal values and therefore it's expansive. Miriam, you agree with that? Scott. British values, squelchy or quite other, clear? Yeah. Squelchy, Peter, quite clear, Daniel. I don't mean that personally. No, I, think, I, think, <laughs> I think where Peter's right is that there is, a, and it's been expressed by others, but there is obviously a debt to Christianity in this country, and there's no reason to pretend that there isn't. Why wouldn't we acknowledge that? It's part of the history, but there's also, you know, a debt to other trends and ideas, and acknowledging that is part of recognising that what it meant to be British in Peter's parents' generation is not what it means to be British today. Okay. And to be inclusive means acknowledging the new voices in that discussion in the the redefinition of what it means to be British. Uh, no, Britishness. Britishness. What, what's it all about? Um, I'm a proud Muslim. I'm proud to be British. I love being in Britain. It's a tolerant society. The British people are very tolerant and loving people. I want to, uh, I want to keep it that way. And what's happening right now is that some, some bigoted politicians are making look this country ugly. It's a beautiful country. It must remain so. And I defend the freedom of every single individual who lives here according to the law. Thank you very much. <laughs> the final word. Uh, Ajmal, last word, I think. To me, Britain has given me what it should have given me. Uh, to me, Britain is more Islamic than most Muslim countries. And that in itself says a lot to me. It's where I can be who I am. I can be free to express myself. I can have my children grow. I can be proud of my neighbours. I can be proud of everything. But do you know what? Some of these values are universal and I want to be a proud citizen of the world where these values are practiced by everybody. <laughs> and, and Okay, well, um, I think we are going to get one last word, and that's going to be from okay, yeah, I just want to say, 30 seconds. It's a feeling, and we love being here, and that feeling is what we need to promote. So everyone uh, wants to make this country better and safer and more secure going forward for our future generations. It doesn't well, have to well, be I want to end it there, because we're ending on <laughs> harmony. Before, <laughs> before we all go to lunch together, yeah, believe really that, you'll believe anything. To As our debate continues on Twitter online, end of the series, we're back next year, January the 11th. Until then, have a great summer.